This is the last video in the series on what life was like in the 18th century. It's a short video here at the end. In this video, we're going to look at the religious revival movement known as the Great Awakening. For every action, there is a reaction, and, and so it was with the Enlightenment. If the Enlightenment had primarily affected the wealthier and better educated, its implication that God didn't really control everything, that he's, his natural laws did, worried many others. It, it kind of implied that God was diminishing their importance. It was implying that God didn't care as much about them. For this reason, in the 1730s and 1740s, a religious revival movement spread known as the Great Awakening. It implied that God did indeed care about everyone, even the least significant, and that God was, in fact, still in charge, and people should never, ever forget it. It was an emotional movement, not logical, and if it stressed that those who seemed to diminish God's role and importance risk his wrath, you could suffer in hell. To the Great Awakening, hell was a very real, real place. Many images were vivid of fire and brimstone and an angry God. Ministers' sermons were not stayed, but rather evoked cries and tears, people writhing in piety, worrying, yelling, some overcome with uh, fainting. It, it was a very dramatic performance. It was a way people showed their faith and a way ministers brought people into the movement. Great Awakening preachers often criticized other religious leaders who seemed to reject, uh, accept the tenements, the tenets of the Enlightenment, and this evoked a lot of debate among the clergy. An example was Jonathan Edwards' famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, delivered at Enfield, Connecticut in 1741. God had given humans a chance to confess their sins. It was the mere will of God that kept wicked men from the depths of hell. But God's restraint wouldn't always hold on forever and people had a last chance while still alive to mend their ways. The Great Awakening didn't affect all religions equally. It spread among the Protestant faiths and not among the more formal and hierarchical religions such as Catholicism and Anglicanism. The, the, these faiths kept their structured rituals and sacraments, sacraments their, their order and their rules. The Great Awakening arguably negatively affected these faiths which people called old lights, ministers who maintained their, uh, sort of restrained their emotions and appealed more solemnly to, to their faith. The old light ministers were generally better educated and officially sanctioned by their faiths. New Lights was the name given to the preachers who adopted the Great Awakening form of preaching, the emotional preaching. As the movement spread across America, it contributed to a growing inter interdenominational appeal among Protestants. New Lights often were people inspired by the Bible and simply turned to the pulpit. New Lights would often travel and give open-air sermons outside of towns, hardly the uh, stained glass churches. Crowds could get quite large, and people sometimes would camp out for the sermons. These types of sermons became known as camp meetings. One of the more famous of the traveling new lights was George Whitfield. It looks like it's pronounced Whitefield, but it's actually pronounced Whitfield. Born in England, he traveled to North America in the 1740s. He preached up and down the Atlantic coast between 1739 and 1770. And he would give sermons to an open air as much as the people, crowds as much as 30,000 people. He always stressed being born again. People have estimated that he's, he made 18,000 sermons over these years, which comes to about two a day every day for almost 30 years. Benjamin Franklin attended one of Whitfield's meetings and was skeptical, but reported how he gave in when Whitfield ended by asking for donations. Quote, I began to soften and concluded to give the coppers. Another stroke of his oratory made me ashamed of that and, and determined to give the silver. And he finished so admirably that I emptied my pocket wholly into the collector's dish, gold and all. Another witness described Whitfield, quote, 
His sermon was sharper than a two-edged sword. The bitter cries and groans were enough to pierce the hardest heart. Some of the people were pale as death. Others were wringing their hands. Others lying on the ground and most lifting their eyes to the heavens and crying God, to God for mercy. The Great Awakening profoundly affected the Protestant faith, spreading it. And it uh, really led to sort of an interdenominational movement among the the Protestants, but it, it also led to new denominations. Uh, the best example is perhaps Methodism. It was originally founded in England by John Wesley, who stressed a belief in human perfectibility and the possibility of salvation for all. It was picked up and publicized in America by Fran Francis Ashbery, who became the creator of American M Methodism. Before his death in 1816, Ashbury traveled 270,000 miles, preached 16,000 times, and enrolled over 200,000 members in his new Methodist church. Out of the more traditional Puritan faith grew Presbyterianism and Congregationalism. As we've noted already, Congregationalists retained the major Puritan emphasis on organization and control by everyday church members, but began to see sort of a, a weakening of that strict Puritan theology. Anyway, Presbyterianism followed more directly the teachings of traditional Calvinism, but demanded uh, a different organization. Church organized by church federations called Presbyteries, and even larger groups called Synods. Presbyterianism and Congregationalism both grew tremendously out of the original Puritan faith. Another new religious uh, denomination were the Baptists. Baptists were perhaps strongest among the lower classes in the South, and they really stressed the importance of adult baptism and immersion in water. It's sort of the, the established Catholicism and Angli, Angli, Anglicanism had baptism at, at birth, because if without baptism into the church, you, you wouldn't be saved. Baptists stressed it was important for adults to uh, openly accept God, sort of, again, be born again. And uh, they didn't really stress the need for a formally trained or educated clergy. And they were really big in, se in, in encouraging separation of church and state. Uh, they were prominent among the, the Westerners and the poorer elements. And of course, the government was dominated by the wealthier Anglicans and, and Catholics. This concludes the uh, short video on the Great Awakening.